Okay, today we see how to do uh, graphics in LaTeX, how to draw your own pictures. Um, we are going to be to be using the Tix package, T-I-K-Z. And once you include this package, what you have to do is start the, the Tix picture environment. And now you can start giving the commands to actually draw the stuff. The most simple one is the draw command, is the command you're going to be using uh, most of the time. And let's see how to draw a straight line. You have to specify a starting coordinate, say 0, 0. And you do da dash dash, and then the coordinate where you want your, uh, your straight line to end. Let's say uh, 2, 1. And then you end with a semicolon. Now we compile this, and we get this kind of line. So what is the 0, 0 point for LaTeX? Uh, by default, if you just write these coordinates like this, 0, 0, 2, 1, it's going to be in centimeters. So 0, 0 is going to be taken uh, any point in the page where it, 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 where it is suitable, depending on what, what you draw. And if you don't specify anything here, it's centimeters. So for example, I could write, I don't know, 1.5 centimeters or something like uh, 20 millimeters, or you can use inches, points, uh, whatever unit you prefer. Um, and you can also use uh, polar coordinates uh, specified in this way. Let's say we're continuing on this path, we're doing another straight line to the point which has polar coordinate, let's say a degree of uh, 120 degrees. So you write this with a radius of, I don't know, three centimeters. So you do with a, with a column, you denote that you're, that you're using uh, polar coordinates. And if you do this, you see this is going to work. This is the point zero, zero. And this is the point of a, an angle of 120 degrees with the horizontal line and three centimeters distance from the origin, which is zero, zero. Uh, if you want to draw something and then you realize at the end of your drawing that your picture is not uh, it's not big enough, you can use the scale option here at the beginning. So you scale it, let's say, with a factor of 2 or something, and you see it's twice as big. Um, now, uh, let's say you want to change something with the slides. For example, you want to change the colors. You can give options to the draw command. Let's say if you just write the name of a color, it's going to take it as color here, and now it turned to blue. Uh, you can also specify uh, width for this line, a thickness. So for example, if you say very thick, the line is going to be uh, thicker. Uh, and the order of these options does not matter. You can move them around, and Tix is going to uh, to be able to recognize them and see what you're doing. You see, I changed the order, and it's, it's the same. Um, for thickness, you can actually specify uh, more precisely what you want, very thick, there's also very thin you see uh, it's thin uh, or without the very it's uh, almost imperceptibly larger but you can actually specify it by hand by saying line width and then you specify something like I don't know three millimeters which is going to be quite large I think yeah um, one thing if you want to draw a closed line you could right here go back to the zero uh, what did you write Zero, 0 point, but you see what happens here is that they don't really match. So if you want to draw a closed line, the last point, instead of rewriting the first point, you write uh, the cycle keyword. And now it realizes that you actually want to close the cycle, so it writes something, it draws something nicely here. Um, okay, colors, you saw me uh, specify this blue. Of course, you have a lot of, uh, a lot of colors already defined, but you can define them by hand with this particular syntax. Um, so let's say we want blue, but we want something lighter. So we want like 50% blue and 50%, I don't know, white. So 50% blue, you use this notation here, ex exclamation mark 50, and you see that you have a lighter blue here. If I write exclamation mark like 20, you have something even lighter. Um, you can also mix colors. So if you want something which is 50% blue and the rest, the other 50% red, you can specify it like this. So this is going to be purple. And yeah, and also if you give more than one color, also the other color can have a specified 
uh, intensity. So I want something which is 50% blue and the rest is 20% red. You do something like this. Um, now we can actually also give names to coordinates if we want. So you can do something like coordinate, let's call it A at, and we're going to copy this point here, here, and we are defining a coordinate called A, and let's also define a coordinate called B, and let's say this one here, and then, yeah, let's do it like this, then here you can just write A and B, uh, and it's going to be the same exact, exact same picture, of course. Uh, let's actually change back the color to something more visible. Uh, and the nice thing about this is, is that you can define the coordinates at the beginning, and then you reason like you're actually doing mathematics. You know, you you if you have a geometric geometry problem, you give names to points, say A, B, C, but you don't specify exactly where they are. And this you can do exactly the same, and you can specify uh, specify where the points are in a separate part of your file. So here, if I want to change something, now I don't want one centimeter, I want, I don't know, minus one centimeter, I can change it here, and then I don't change the logic of the drawing. Okay, um, with lines, uh, you can actually have uh, draw much more, many more uh, decorations on your lines. Uh, for example, let me just make this smaller here, uh, and not so thick, blue is fine. Um, yeah, one thing you can do is, for example, oops, draw an arrow, and to draw an arrow you can just use this option here, which is kind of like specifying the color, you just specify the style, and let's say you want to draw an arrow from, uh, what are the points here, A maybe, to your point, uh, I don't know, mm, 5, 0. And you see this, is, this looks like an arrow here. Oh, actually, we maybe we wanted some um, to make it a bit larger. Yeah, so you see it has a, it has a arrow tip here. Um, you can also write them, for example, uh, a, a dashed line, let's say from this uh, 5, 0 to, uh, to our point, I don't know, B, that we had before. This line here is going to be dashed, it can be dotted. So you know you have quite some freedom. And of course you cannot you can draw more than just straight lines, because these are all straight lines, a bit decorated maybe, but they're all straight lines. Uh, you can draw shapes. So let's remove some of this stuff, maybe uh, let's remove the, the first triangle here. Uh, you can draw, for example, uh, a rectangle, and to do so you, you need to specify two opposite uh, vertices. For example, if you want to draw a rectangle from 0, 0 coordinate to uh, the point, what was it, B, we would write 0, 0, rectangle B. And this draws, you see, this was point zero zero. this is a rectangle which goes from here to here, and there's only one way to draw a rectangle, which has these two as opposite vertices and uh, lines, sides parallel to uh, the sides of your paper. Um, yeah, and what else, you can, what else can you draw? You can draw circles. Draw, uh, let's say, still centered in zero, zero. You can draw a circle. You can specify a radius. Whoops, that's not how you spell it. Radius, let's say, I don't know, two centimeters. And this is how you draw a circle. And all these things you saw here, I draw a blue rectangle because I used the, the code that I wrote before. So for all these kind of shapes, you can also uh, specify the style as for straight lines. For example, if I wanted dashed, you see I get a dashed circle. Um, other things you can write, well, for circles, you can actually specify, uh, you can actually write, uh, draw an ellipse with uh, we have a circle command you just need to specify the x radius and the y radius so if you do like x radius equals two centimeters and y radius equals one centimeter well actually you don't need to specify centimeters because as, as i said uh, well no, you, you must specify centimeters if you do specify it once forget the last sentence um yeah you can have an ellipse if you specify the x and y radius 
Um, um, one thing you can do, obviously, you can uh, fill these shapes that you draw. For example, uh, let's take this rectangle here. If you want to fill it, uh, let's change the color. Let's change it to default color. If you want to fill it, you need to use the fill draw command. Uh, there's also a fill command. There's a difference between fill and fill draw. Uh, you can always use fill draw. The difference is uh, very tight unless, oops, sorry, unless you have very thick borders. Uh, with fill draw, well, let's see what happens here. It's filled, of course. And you can specify both uh, a border color and a, a filling color. So, for example, if you say fill equals uh, green, and then draw is, uh, I don't know, red, you get red borders. Now, you don't see that the borders are very thin now, and the inside is green. And you can draw um, a thicker border by just simply specifying like that thick like you did before, and now it's thicker. Uh, now you see this ellipse here is above this rectangle, and the reason is very simple, is that ticks um, draws things in order, in the orders you specify them. So if you move this line above here, uh, you actually get that the rectangle is in front of the um, of the ellipse, because it, you draw the ellipse first, and then you draw uh, the rectangle. So this is a simple rule to keep in mind uh, to get things placed as you wish. Uh, so now let's let's see a more complicated example. Uh, let's try to draw well, this one. Uh, this is actually similar to uh, an example that's in the official Tix manual, which is in the description. Uh, you see, this is quite this is, doesn't look too hard to draw, but there are a couple of elements uh, which we should be able to to draw now with what I just said. Uh, so let's start. Uh, maybe we can start from the axis. We know how to draw them. They are simple arrows. And the circle, of course, we can draw it. So let's go back here. Uh, let's, let's just start something in a new page. And again, ticks picture. OK. So. OK, so we set the axis. Um, well, we just use a draw command, and we draw, let's say, I don't know how many, how many uh, dots are here. This is like, square should be one centimeter, maybe. So this is like from minus five, five. So let's say we want to draw it. Uh, they are arrows. So we specify this arrow option. And we draw them from uh, the point minus five, zero to the point zero, uh, sorry, five, zero. And then the same thing, switching the coordinates. So here, zero is minus five, zero, five. And we should get, yeah, they reasonably look like axis. Um, then what we want to draw, we want to draw the circle. Uh, we don't need any option here. So it's centered in zero, zero. It's a circle with radius, uh, what was it, maybe four centimeters, I think. Uh, you don't have to specify uh, the unit all the time, but I think the error we had before is that if you do specify it once, you also need to specify it the second time. So yeah, you can write four here without centimeters. Um, OK, so what else can we draw, uh, can we draw here? What else do we want to draw? Um, this is radius here, so we better use polar coordinates for this one. And then we want to draw this one uh, in a different color. So let's go back here. Um, let's draw. Uh, yeah, so from 0, 0, let's go a simple line to a uh, point. Let's say it was 60 degrees, so we want to specify 60 degrees. And then the radius was four, so we should be exactly a point on, a cir on the circle. Uh, let's actually let me just remove everything that we did before, so we don't have to scroll back every time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this is a point on the circle. Good. And now. Uh, oh yeah, there was a grid behind this, right? So there's this grid here. How do we draw a grid? Well, we can draw it by hand. Uh, we could actually use a for cycle, a for loop. If you, if you know programming, you know loops, we can actually use that. We will see it later. Uh, but there's a specific command to draw this kind of grids. 
uh, within the draw commands, like you draw rectangles, the syntax is the same. You can actually draw, uh, let me draw it here. You can draw um, from, what was it, minus five, minus five, to five, five, uh, no, sorry, we don't want a line, we want a um, grid from uh, to five, five. And grid is like a rectangle, it draws from a corner to the other. Now the grid is also black, so we want to draw it in some other color, probably something like light uh, gray, I would say. And this looks enough. Uh, but you see here, uh, yeah, you see that the light gray goes above the, the circle because we, uh, we drew it after. So we just need to move it above here. And now the circle is above uh, the grid lines. Uh, Actually, this axis and the circle are a bit thin, so I would like to draw them thick. And this one too. Yeah, and this one too. We change the style. Yeah, this is a bit better. Uh, now we want to write the sine and cosine. Uh, let's start with the sine. Uh, sorry, with the uh, cosine. Cosine is much simpler because it goes from zero here to one half of the radius, so from zero to two. Uh, we can simply draw it uh, thick, I think it was blue, and then we draw simply a straight line from zero, zero to uh, two, zero, I think. Okay, yeah, maybe we want it very, very thick. Just a matter of preference. And now for the sign, uh, you can actually use the sign the function to define this point. So you can draw, uh, in, when specifying coordinates, you can say, okay, say very thick, red, uh, from, okay, so it starts from 2, 0, because the, the line starts here, and it goes up to, uh, what is this point? Well, the x coordinate is 2, and the, the y coordinate is the sign of, uh, what was this? 60 degrees, I think. And you use this syntax here. And this is in, uh, this is a command in, in Tix, which is going to compute the sign of this. Uh, well, of course, this is this only gets to here because you need we, we had a radius was four, so four times the sign of 60, and it gets exactly here. So it's nice that you can uh, specify coordinates using this mathematical functions. Okay, now we want to draw the uh, the angle here, the little, uh, it was green, the little arc here, and we want to fill it, so it's something, it's going to be a fill draw, and we said that uh, it was green both on the inside and on the outside, but maybe the inside is a uh, lighter green, so we write something like green, uh, I don't know, 30. Uh, how do we draw an arc? Uh, I didn't show you this before. Uh, the syntax is reminds of that of, of, um, of a circle, but not, it, it is not exactly the same because you specify you don't start from the center of the of the circle that determines this arc. Uh, you write the the starting point first. So this is going to be something like I uh, want it more or less here. So maybe I don't know 1.2 comma zero, and then you write arc. And then you need to specify some options, like the radius. Uh, we want this arc to be centered here. So if we specify one point, it starts from 1.2, it needs radius 1.2. Uh, and then we can specify a start angle to be, well, in this case, zero. Uh, actually, maybe without spaces. I don't know if it makes a difference, actually. Uh, and then an end angle, uh, which in this case is going to be 60, because it's uh, what we are drawing. And if you do this, then you actually get, oh, whoops, I forgot. Uh, yeah, so in this case, you, you see what happens here with the field row. Uh, I made a mistake, but it's actually very good to explain a thing that I didn't show you before. So what happens here? When you field row, uh, so you draw an arc, and the arc draws from the starting point to the end point, which you didn't specify, but it's going to figure out by itself. So the end point is going to be this one. And then you said field row, but this is not a closed path, right? You just specified this path. So field draw, by default, if you don't close the path manually, it's going to close it with a straight line. Uh, 
we actually don't want this in, in this case, so we need to continue from the arc, arc to uh, the origin, maybe. Uh, so we go down here, and then we don't need to specify uh, that we want to come back to the uh, 1.2 zero point. Uh, well, we could. Uh, we could actually just write cycle here, and we whoops, and we get this. If we don't specify cycle, it does more or less the same, except it's not going to draw uh, the darker green. Uh, actually, let me change the, the draw color to something like red, so you can see it. Here, you see we have this red here. If we don't specify cycle, uh, the shape is going to close, the filling is going to be closed here, but you don't have this cycle here. Um, let's say we want to draw it because it's slightly better, and let's get back to green. Yeah, and let's zoom out. Okay, so maybe you actually want this angle here to appear behind this line and this line here, so maybe we draw this uh, much before, like, okay, let's say it's the first thing that we draw in this shape. Okay, and now the last thing we need is those labels, like 60 degrees here, cosine here, we actually write some text. How do we add text here? Uh, we use nodes, so let's, let's start from this uh, the sign here. Uh, it's this command here. If you want to draw a node attached to this line here, we take uh, the part of the code where we draw this line, which is this double dash in this, in this case, and right after it, we write the node command. And the node takes one argument, which has to be in, in uh, curly braces, and we can specify whatever we want here. We can write whatever text that we want, and it's going to appear here. Uh, in this case, we want to write sign, so it's going to be a mathematical formula. So we use math mode, and we write like sign of 60, and then degrees like this. Yeah, and this should work. Uh, it's not very nice, but it is centered here, so we would like to write it, for example, on the right of this line. And we could do this by simply specifying the right option in square brackets here, right after node. And this is on the right. We can do something which is exactly the same with this. We want cosine down here. Um, with what uh, we said below, sorry. And then we want it to display uh, the cosine of 60 degrees. You can see it here. Uh, now we want to do the same for arc. The problem with arc is that where is it here? So let's let me actually break the line here so it's clear the command is clearer. So as I mentioned, we draw this node here, which is right after this double dash, so this node is going to refer to this line here. If you wanted the node to refer to this point, we would move all this stuff right after this zero zero point, and now this writing here uh, refers to the point, and you see it going to be closer to it. Uh, so for arc, we would like to write this command right after the command that draws the arc. The problem is, the command that draws the arc, which I keep forgetting where it is, okay, it's here, uh, it's this one. It starts from this point, then you draw the arc, so it must be after this. But the command that draws the arc not ju doesn't draw, just draw this arc, but also specifies by itself the endpoint. So if you write something here, so if you write node, let's say hello here, this node is going to refer to uh, this point here. Uh, yeah, it's a, you have to find a bit of a workaround, for example, writing this below, below this point, and this is quite okay. Um, I think you can actually specify how much below you want it, let's say 0 0.5 centimeters, and it's going to be down. So you can manually adjust in this case. It's a bit of a hack, but it's fine. If you want, if you don't want to do too complicated things, this is simple enough. And we don't want to write a low here. We want to write, uh, so it's a number, so it's still math mode, 60 degrees. Okay, so we have this picture here. And this is quite nice. I think it's exactly the same as what we had before. Well, anyway, this is what we wanted to draw. But let's say now, okay, so you draw 60 degrees. Uh, but now you 
uh, someone asks you to draw the same picture but for 45 degrees. And now you would have to chase around here all the times that you wrote 60 and change it to a 45. Uh, which is it's not too bad, but there's a, there's a much nicer trick to do this. You can actually write this picture uh, in, in general, let's say, uh, specifying calling uh, a variable with the command pgf math set macro. We can give a name to this variable, for example, angle. I hope this name is not taken. And we specify it to be 60 degrees. And now we can use this command here uh, and write it every time we have a 60. Let me uh, let me actually find all the 60s. Next one, we write angle here. Next one, we write angle here. Doesn't matter if it is inside math mode. This is this command here is a macro, so it's just going to replace 60 every time it finds this command angle. Next one here. I'm replacing all the 60s with my macro name. And this one here, and this should be the last one. If we do this, uh, yeah, it's, this is exactly the same, but now the cool thing is we can change this to be 45 degrees. And you see that now, oh, I think I missed one. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, let's go back to 60. I actually missed something because... So here I did it by hand. This point, uh, I specified it by hand saying, okay, the, the cosine of 60 degrees is one half, so one half of the radius is going to be two. Uh, actually, I would like to write four times cosine of the angle. Okay, this is still the same. And now we should be able to change it to, as I did before, to change it to 45 degrees. Uh, there's again a mistake, yeah, because the same point is here, so let me change it. Sorry for the mistake, I'm not going to to do a take two. Whoops, and this one is also cosine of 60 degrees, I think. Yeah, of the angle, sorry. Okay. Yeah, now if you do everything correctly and you write your points uh, as a function of the angle as they should be, you can change this however you like. You can write it like 75 degrees and the whole picture is going to change accordingly, except I made... Oh no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's just that this uh, angle here is a bit too large, so if you want to write very obtuse angles, you might want to change this, but anyway. Yeah, so this is one cool thing that you can do with ticks. You can write uh, this kind of code, which depends on some variables, and when you adjust the variables, the aspect of the picture uh, changes and you just need to change that one variable and the code is going to produce the correct graphics which you specified. Okay, now let's say you want to draw the same thing over and over many times, uh, like I have here. Uh, so you, you draw the first circle, you, you specify the colors, whatever you want, and then you specify the coordinates and then you just copy paste and maybe you change just the coordinate uh, where you want your circle to be. Uh, but then let's say that you realize that these circles are much too big, that you want something smaller, so you start changing and you have three, so you want it smaller, and you have to change everything. Okay, it took me like three seconds maybe, not too bad, but uh, it, it's annoying to have to do it every time, and then maybe you make a mistake, and then you randomly type like 23 here instead, and this circle gets too small, and then you don't know what happened, you have to look for your mistake. So it would be nice if it was a way to just say, do this many times. And actually there is, uh, you need, just need to use the for each command. Uh, so let's say we're going to draw a second column here of, of circles uh, slightly on the right. So you can use the for each command. You can say um, your variable x, for example, in a list. And Tix is quite good at figuring out what you mean when you write a, li a list uh, in an incomplete form, like with dots. So you can say from zero to, what was it, five, um, yeah, so for uh, for each x in this list, uh, do something, and now you specify it, well, this reminds a bit of, um, of C programming language, or Java, or whatever you use, um, you can write your instructions inside this block here, uh, actually you need to end the block with a semicolon, like you do here, and your instruction can be draw, and then you, okay, now you need to copy-paste it, but just once, 
and you paste it here. And let's say we want it to be, uh, so what, what are the coordinates now that you want to specify? Uh, we want them somewhat on the right of this column, so we write like one here. Uh, and then we write like, uh, yeah, the, the variable that we defined. So at coordinate one x, draw this circle for each x in this list. Now, what happens here? You see that I get uh, basically the same thing. And let's say that I would now want to change, I don't know, the color. I want them to be red. Red, well, not really red, but whatever. Um, yeah, you just need to do it once. Uh, let's say that they are too close to the first column. When you want to, to move it to the right, you can just change it once. So it's very convenient to use this for each command when you uh, want to specify many things. Um, uh, let's actually just remove this first line here. And let's go back to zero. Uh, for example, you can also, uh, so inside of for each, for each basically means just repeat this stuff uh, every, uh, for, for uh, sorry, repeat all this stuff inside the curly braces when x varies in this list here. And this stuff can literally be anything. Uh, you can, for example, have another for each inside here, uh, for each y in, uh, let's say the same list, and actually let's say y goes from zero up to x. So x now is, is a fixed number, and you repeat this for each value of x in this list. So x, x is going to be a value between zero and five. Um, and what do you want to draw? You say you, you want to draw this, but with coordinates y and x, which, well, let's say x and y, otherwise, my brain is going to cry. And you see that we, we drew basically a triangle because here, what did it say the first time? Well, x is, uh, it's actually up here, the first line, x is 0, y is 0, draw the circle centered in 0, 0. Uh, no, I guess it's this one uh, with uh, radius 3. And then the second time, x is 1, then y can be 1, uh, can be 0 up to 1. So you draw this circle and then you draw this one and you go on like this. Um, uh, you can use the for each command also uh, inside some other command because for each basically says, okay, you see this stuff here in the block, you repeat it uh, with the variable that varies in this list. Uh, so you can also say, for example, draw, uh, let's say you want to draw a path and the points are specified uh, in sequence by a for each. Uh, you can say like this, draw, and then let's say the first, you specify the first point and then you say for each, um, x in a list, let's say, let's say something like one, two, three, uh, and then you simply specify, uh, this, like coordinates that the path has to go through. So you do dash dash, and then let's say we want to draw like an approximated parabola. So enough of that x and then x square, and we can close this here and you get this. So you see for each x in uh, this list, it drew the point from the previous point to this point x squared. So it goes from 0, 0 to uh, 1, 1, and then to 2, 4, and then to 3, 9. Um, now, as I mentioned, Tix is pretty good at figuring out what you mean when you draw, uh, write a list like this. So let's say we want to do this, uh, instead of having a precision of one centimeter, we want like half a centimeter. So we want to do something like 0 0.5 and then one, and then on and on like this up to, what's it, three. Uh, actually, Tix understands this, uh, but you need to specify also a second element to tell it that uh, you want the step to be, uh, in this case, half a centimeter. And if you do this, it's going to understand exactly what you want here. And you see here we go, uh, the first point as X coordinate, half a centimeter and then on like this. There are a lot of extension packages for ticks that you can download from here, uh, but many of them are already included in most LaTeX distributions and they are useful to draw specific things. For example, uh, this one is to draw graphs, uh, this one is to draw block diagrams. Uh, some of them are almost jokes. For example, you can draw, uh, where is it, your yeah, you can draw your Among Us sprite 
or avatar uh, with Tix. Uh, but the one I'm going to show you now is uh, Tix uh, CD, uh, which is for community diagrams. Uh, what is it? This one. This one here. Uh, this one is already included in TechLive, which is the last distribution I have. Uh, maybe it is not included in your latter distribution. Uh, if it is not, you can just follow the instructions here to download it. Uh, what can you do with it? You can draw uh, community diagrams, uh, which are this kind of stuff here. And we have another example here. This is actually an example included in the manual, if you want to copy it from there. Uh, so let's see how to draw this kind of stuff, which is uh, which is common in, in some areas of mathematics, for example, in algebra. Uh, for example, I have to draw a lot of this stuff. Uh, so let's see how, how to do this in LaTeX. So, uh, yeah, let's go here. Uh, yeah, this is the old picture. So to do to use uh, TIX CD, you have to use this package. Uh, you don't need to include also TIX, but you just need this one, TIX uh, CD. And to draw um, a diagram, you begin the environment, which is called TixCD without the dash. OK, and once you start this environment, when, when you are inside this environment, you are automatically in math mode, so you can use all the uh, math symbols uh, that, you, that you're used to. Uh, yeah, so for example, if I simply do like this, uh, we're going to get this symbol here. Uh, let me just increase it a bit. Uh, and then, how do you draw an arrow? Well, with the arrow command. Uh, we have to tell the arrow the direction we want it to go, and we want it to go to the right. So we specify R. So here you can write any combination of the letters R, D, U, L for right, down, up, left, and in any sequence. Uh, but the problem is that the target must exist. So if I just do this, I'm going to get an error because on the right of this symbol there is nothing. And how do you specify that, that you want something on the right of the symbol? You do it uh, like you use in a tabular or array environment. You use ampersand and then you write the symbol uh, on the right. For example, it was a Y in this case. Uh, yeah, so, and if you want to go to a new line, you write uh, double backslash and you go to a new line, just like an array uh, in LaTeX. Uh, actually, I don't know if it was Y or X here. Let me check. Uh, yeah, we actually had X here and Y down here. So uh, let me change this to X and Y here. And then we add, forgot again, Z. OK. Oh, yeah, of course, it's a pullback. Um, whoops, now my face comes stopped. OK. Uh, sorry. Let me pull it back here. OK, I'm back, I'm back. Um, yeah, OK, so for example, if you want an arrow, well, well, actually, let me just compile this. You get your matrix with four elements here. And if you want to draw an arrow from here down to Y, you write it here, arrow down. If you wanted this arrow not to go straight down to Y, but to Z, for example, you can write DR, and it goes down one cell and right one cell. So you get it here. But actually, we wanted it uh, to be straight down. Uh, and then you have something down from x to z, and one from y on the right to z. OK, so these are the arrows. Uh, the arrows have labels, usually. And you specify the labels here, still in the options. Uh, for example, here, you have to write, uh, if you specify a label, you write it in uh, quotes, double quotes. Uh, so here we found this called P, I think. And you do it, uh, you can do it like this. And then uh, we add, for example, uh, the one that goes down here from uh, yeah, this one uh, was called Q, I think. Now I'm probably swapping them. Yeah, so it, you get a Q, Q, Q here. If you want to write it on the other side of the arrow, so uh, Tix is going to try to figure out where you might want it. Uh, if you want to change the position with respect to the arrow, you write a single quote after this double quote, and you're going to get it here. Uh, now, what are the other arrows called? Uh, F and G. OK. Uh, so this one is called F, and this one is called G. 
yeah, sorry, I forgot the comma. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe you want this G to be down instead of above this arrow. Okay. Uh, and now we want something up here. So uh, we should you should uh, you should think about it in terms of cells, like in a matrix. So this is one cell, one cell here. So we need, want something probably uh, one cell above this and one cell on the left. So it's going to be on a line of itself. Uh, it was called T, I think. And it's the only thing on its line, but it, it's going to have some arrows that go out of it. But uh, let's focus on the other lines. We want to shift them because now this T is going to be straight up here. So if we want to shift it, we probably want this to be somewhere on the right. So we add a fake empty cell on the left by writing ampersand here. Okay, this is pretty much what we want. And now we want arrows. Uh, so this arrow goes from, the first one goes from T to this X here. So it's going to be an arrow here, which goes, it goes down, then it goes on the right, and on the right again. So it's going to be DRR. Let's see. Yep, it goes here. Uh, and this was called uh, small x, I think, in the picture. Uh, and then we do the same here. Uh, an arrow to y goes down, down, and then on the right. Down, down, right. And it was called small y. Yeah, and maybe we want the small y to be on the other side of this arrow. Now, in the picture I had, uh, let me actually increase this one. We don't need that much space, so we can do this. Yeah. Uh, in the picture, these arrows are curved. How do you curve them? Well, it's quite easy. If you want a simple curve, you, uh, you use the bend right and bend left command. So this arrow goes here. So this is its left side, so you want to bend it on the left. And the other one, you want to bend it on the right. And you simply write uh, bend right. Now you can actually be more precise and specify like uh, the angles with which this arrow has to leave this T here and has to enter this Y here. So you can do something like uh, you want the out angle to be, I don't know, you say you want to, to do like a circle here. So you want it, uh, well, let's say 240 degrees. And then you want it to go in into this Y at uh, 180 degrees. So straight horizontally. And you see that this arrow curves as you specified. So it's actually quite powerful. Uh, let's keep it like this. I don't necessarily like it more, but it's just to keep a different example. Uh, and then we, ha we have this arrow here, diagonally. So it's an arrow, uh, arrow, uh, what is it? Simply DR, it goes down one cell to the right one cell. Uh, and it was, well, let's, Let's paint it now, okay. And it was uh, dotted. So how do you get dotted arrow? Uh, whoops. Well, you simply write dotted. And this is going to be dotted. If you wanted it dashed, you could write dashed. And you can specify all different sorts of styles for this arrow. For example, if you want uh, this arrow to, have, to, have, to be like a, a hook on the tail, you write hook. It's going to have a hook. If you want it to have two heads, you write two heads, and you get two heads. So in the description of this video, uh, I will link a PDF, which uh, which is a sort of manual for this uh, Texas CD package. It's like 17 pages, so it's not too long. You can go through it and see all these kind of options which you can have. Uh, but if we did not want these two options, we can leave it dashed. Uh, it was actually dotted, so say dotted. And last thing, we want it to be called, uh, I think it was x, comma, y. Uh, did I make a mistake here somewhere? Dotted x, y. Wait, let me let me remove this. We should work, right? Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you have to put it in, if you write, if the name is a bit, oh yeah, because in the name, so what was the mistake here? So I wrote, x comma y and it doesn't compile there's an error the problem is this comma here 
So Tix is good at some things, but some other things is not very good. It's not very good at parsing strings in particular, because it, it thinks that this comma here is part of, uh, I'm specifying a list of options separated by a comma, so it thinks, okay, this one is your first option. But then it realizes that I didn't close the double quotes, so it gives an error. Uh, when I actually close the quotes here, and this comma here is part of the label for this error, so what I need to do is to basically just enclose this uh, label inside uh, curly braces, and now it's going to work. Uh, now, one last thing. Uh, this label here was right on top of this arrow. So the way you do it uh, is you change the little parameter here. You don't uh, separate it with a comma because it's a parameter for the label. You write description to get it uh, exactly here. So, so yeah, so this is pretty much the diagram that we had in the picture, so let's see. Uh, yeah, should be it. With some changes, we had this curve, uh, this arrow curved differently, and then we placed these letters on a different side of the arrow. But basically, this is the same picture. And as you can see, it's not very hard to get very nice results. So if you need to draw this kind of stuff, I suggest you use this package here, TixCD. And remember, you use package tix cd with a dash, and the environment is called tix cd without dash. So, see you next time.